Today is Thrash the XC Bikes Day. <coughs> Hit the brakes and absolutely nothing happened. We're Sid and Mackie and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. Three, two, one. Obviously, BC Bike Race is on that list. One of the most iconic stage races in the world, this year's edition will be hosted on Vancouver Island, home to some of the world's best mountain biking. This race is technical, physically demanding, and competitive, and it's just as hard on your gear as it is on your body. We last raced BCBR back in 2019 as a duo team, and we made some mistakes with our equipment choice. At the time, we didn't have cross-country bikes, so we rode mid-sized trail bikes that, while fun on the descents, were suboptimal on the climbs. And we were constantly yo-yoing back and forth with other racers. Because our bikes were heavy, we ran the lightest possible tires to compensate, and, well, I'm not sure that strategy has ever worked for anyone, and the results were predictable. Since then, we've done a lot of cross-country racing and have a much better idea of what we can get away with in terms of tire and bike choice. However, BCBR will probably be more technical than any other XC race we've done this year, so we're heading to our local bike park, Pajarito, to put our gear choice and our skills to the test. Oh, it's pretty fast and loose. You guys might remember that earlier this season at the Grand Junction Rides and Vibes, I pinch flatted my rear tire. Looking at it in hindsight, I realized I was running fairly low tire pressures, a little bit lower than I normally do, so it wasn't that surprising, but it did make me wonder if there was a way that I could run those lower tire pressures without risking flatting. I have decided to try out XC Cush Core. Some friends have recommended it, they use it, they like it, see how it feels, see if I can run lower tire pressures and still protect from pinch flats and rim hits because that might be something that I end up doing moving forward on my XC bike. I've never run an insert on my XC bike before. I've run Vittoria Airliner inserts on enduro and trail bikes. So this brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Competitive Cyclist. As you guys know, Competitive Cyclist has been a huge supporter of this channel and that is actually where I got the Cushcore XC. Competitive Cyclist has a huge range of tire inserts available everything from Cushcore to the Vittoria Airliner to Tannis to ones I've never even heard of before. If this is something that you are considering for your bike, whether it's XC bike or otherwise, definitely head to Competitive Cyclist, check out their range of inserts. And as always, you can use the code Sid and Mackie 15 for 15% off your first order. Some exclusions apply. Well, that went a lot easier than I thought it was going to. I guess my <laughs> experience replacing tires, tubeless tires, uh, yeah, made it pretty straightforward. So I don't know, it took me five minutes or something. Definitely see how on a stiffer sidewall tire, like a double down or a wire bead, anything like that, it would be harder. But with this, it was real straightforward. What are you doing? I'm inventing. Inventing? So, this has been our setup for a while. This Usui pack with the camera plate, which is preferable over wearing both a pack and a chest camera, but it literally, like, I feel like I'm wearing the corset, and sometimes it, like, does this. It slides up and chokes me and then the cameras are here and then all the comments are like, you breathe really loud. And like, I'm literally inhaling the camera. If this works, we could have an Etsy store. <laughs> <laughs> My dream come true. <laughs> if you don't use dual lock for everything. Are you actually an inventor? It gives you snaps to itself like this. Okay, the buckle still works, so that's great news. I'm afraid it might move too much. 
I mean, it does move, but the stabilization is so good. I think we just have to see if it works or not, basically. It's really see? not moving that much. Actually. No, it really is fine. Okay. Today is Thrash the XC Bikes Day. <laughs> <laughs> Poor XC Bikes. Um, basically, we're going to ride up a hill, do our training ride, ride at the bike park on the cross country bikes. Because, yeah, that's the best way to test some gear. We're probably not going to have anything quite like Pajarito no, in BCBR. I, I would say BC tends to have steeper trails than we have around here. Um, they're usually not as loose and nasty as Pajarito. So I think if we and our equipment can survive that, it'll be good. Mackie's testing the Kush Core. I'm testing my new camera setup. Also learned when we did single track six last year, we had been riding a lot of bike park on bigger bikes, riding a lot of trail bikes. Then we made some changes to the XC bikes, put on the two piston brakes and went up to BC and rode steeper things on XC bikes. And I kept overcooking corners and crashing because I forgot that you have to brake earlier when you have little brakes. The XC bikes are just a little less forgiving on super steep trails and I think it'll be good to do something that's harder than what we're likely to see in BC. Albeit hard in a different way, we unfortunately cannot find wet roots. <laughs> Steep, muddy, wet roots over here. Yeah, we can't find that. So that we'll, we'll be ranking it on that, but um, I think we'll be fine. The other thing is tires with a little bit smaller tread mm -hmm. tends to be... That's the, the other reason why it's hard to slow down. I'm really hoping this camera setup works because it is a lot more comfortable than the old chest plate situation but I'd say I'm a little concerned that it's comfortable because it's loose so we'll see I have one piece of advice for you what be the hammer not the nail <laughs> yeah. I think there's a reason this is called nail trail and it's because you are the nail you're going that way oh. That. Wow, it's almost like no one rides this trail because it sucks so much. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see you! Hello trail! Where are you? There's um, usually some hiking bike on this. This first feature I've never made. I feel like it's possible, but let's give it a go. Yeah, it's hard because you have to like wiggle your feet between two rocks at the same time that you are doing an up move. Sid and I are splitting here. She's gonna go up Nail Trail, which is a very steep, rocky, pretty heinous climb. And I'm gonna go up, we think it's called Pajarito Canyon, um, but this trail, because I have never been up it I've been down it, but I'm sort of curious what it's like climbing. I think I could ride this if it were all in different pieces, but putting it all together is really hard. And that was not the move. <laughs> it's so loose at the start. And then you have to like knock it offline like I did. Okay, this section, I'm gonna go ahead and say not rideable going up. Come on, Mackie. We're getting there, slowly but surely.
Morning guys, how's it going? Appreciate it. <laughs> Good job, man. Hey, thanks. You guys enjoy. I always like when hikers are like, wow, like they're impressed that I'm up here because that's a hundred percent my reaction to them also. I'm like, really? You walked all the way up here? That's crazy. Getting there, getting there. Okay, dog patch. XC bike, XC shoes. Let's see how it is. slippery on that corner. That was a pretty brutal climb. <laughs> you know when you descend a trail, it's like really hard to say how it's gonna feel going up it. Like, I have times where I'm like, you go down something and you're like, oh, I could climb up that. And other times, you think the opposite and it ends up being fine. And the times that you thought that you could climb up it end up being miserable. Like that. Well, I would call that a very respectable dog patch run. Look who I found. It's Sid. Sid also decides to run the right doggy catch. Oh yeah, it's totally fine. I'm a dork. Why do I worry about things? Yeah, the camera's moving a lot, so I will have to see what the GoPro stabilization can do. Traction? Traction? What's that? I stayed outside here. <coughs> Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little rougher. Thank you. Run. I'd like to do a fast and loose at some point, just because I think, I mean, it would be, it would be steep and loose and, but I'd sort of just like to see what it feels like. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing something stupid. <laughs> what? Pretty fast and loose. <laughs> <laughs> On those bikes? Yeah. Well, Sid apparently wrote down earlier this year that she wanted to write, ride fast and loose on her XC bike. So, yeah, well, fast and loose, here we are. <laughs> Should be a good test of the Kush core also. The thing with this trail is that it just doesn't shoot very well. It has some pretty steep sections, but mostly it's just really loose and spinning. Which is always interesting on XC tires. Okay, well, it's totally fine. Oh, 
Cast of Lewis on the XC bike. <laughs> You're good. I shouldn't tailgate me on this. That was my bad. Okay, looser than anything so far. Brakes and absolutely nothing happened. Yeah, I actually could not resist trying to stay up with someone on a downhill bike. Which is fine with me. I'll just keep puttering my way safely. Breaking <laughs> the corkscrew. Chairlift has gotten cold. Yeah, We're going to do one final lappy lap. Let's do it. I very much enjoyed it's riding my cross country bike on the Little bikes trails. are so capable these days. It was they really are. Really fun. It wasn't as fast as yeah. riding a big bike, but well, and it was very it was doable. interesting to me what I noticed, which was less traction in the tires, sure. specifically cornering knobs. Mm -hmm. So like corners were a little looser, yeah. obviously. Slightly steeper head angles. So like the little drops in the trail it felt were not a lot bigger. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> what do you think of the Kush car? I liked it. I was really impressed. I ran uh, like two and a half psi lower than I normally do. Based on the like riding I've been doing on those tires since Grand Junction, I'm not sure I need the Kush core all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's going to be like my default. Mm -hmm. 
but having it as an option, I'm very excited about, and I think I will probably do it for Downeyville. And also, obviously, it might be muddy in BC. Mm, we do have point. Maxis Severs. Those will mm -hmm. be our go-to if it's wet. Um, there's kind of no point in trying those at Paha because they wouldn't be the right tire for the trail. <laughs> it wasn't wet. <laughs> we'll have a couple days in BC before the race, so we'll get to try those tires out, see if that's the right move. And we should have a better idea of like weather prediction, or weather forecast for the race, all that. Yeah, weather, exactly. like, are we going recon races, Aspens, Severs? And obviously, Equipment choice is really only kind of one drop in the bucket of being prepared for a race. The training is much, 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 much more important, and that is what we're going to be talking about in next week's video. We will see you guys then. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, try to help us get to 100,000 subscribers. And in the meantime, don't forget to be more awesome.